Yo, yo, yo guys, what is up? Welcome to a new video of the Mark II Golf build. Today we are going to have a look at the rust on the car, where we can cut the rear, how far the car is rusted on the places that come through the paint job. And also, let's have a look on the rust in the engine bay. Let's see how far it is gone. Can we still use the, the pieces of metal inside the engine bay or not? Do we have to replace them? Today we will find out. But first of all, I just wanted to talk to you guys uh, about this channel. What is the purpose of this channel? Why we are building a Mark II Golf? Is this the only build we will do or not? The purpose of this channel is to show you guys cool stuff to build yourself. We are going to do everything ourselves. Everything we will do or weld or make or customize and everything should be fairly easy to do So should be doable for you guys at home too um, You won't be needing any special tools only for the welding part But welding itself actually isn't that hard. It's fairly easy to learn So if you have the money and have the time you should look into that It can spare you a lot of money on customizing stuff or building stuff We are starting with a Mark II Golf and our goal is to build our way up from car to car to car, starting with a very low budget, like a $100 Golf. Build it up, trade it up or sell it, get another car, build that one up even cooler, even more dope, even lower, even nastier, even angrier. And in the meanwhile, trying to show you guys how to do stuff, how to widen up fenders, how to make your own diffusers, how to engine swap, how to do cabling and, and stuff like that so you guys can do the same exact thing at home and maybe learn a thing or two here in the channel. I'm not a mechanic, I haven't learned welding anything at school. I did learn everything myself using YouTube with the help of you guys, with so, with help of some of, of these channels and yeah that's why I'm here. So let's go to our drawing board and see what we have spent already on the car, what we need to spend and which parts are already on their way. We did spend a little bit of money uh, already, let's go have a look. So our super professional whiteboard right here, let's get me, let's get the marker real quick. So first of all, Mark II. Well, first project of the, of the, of the channel. We bought the car for $100. It didn't cost me anything to tow it here because yeah, we towed it ourselves. I did buy a new battery for the car and did buy a new oil for the car, a new oil filter, a new interior filter, a new gasoline filter and it cost me, let's call it parts one. Yeah, let's, let's just do it like this. Let's go right it up in front. Actually, everything is in euros. I spent euros right here, but I think, in my opinion, everything would be quite the same in dollars or euros. As in, um, yeah, if, if someone pays one or 50 euros over here for parts or stuff for a car, I think it should be around 50 euros um, over there in the US too. I'll write everything down in dollars, but keep in mind, I actually paid uh, euros for it, but it should, shouldn't be that, that much of a difference. So for the battery, the parts, the old filters and stuff like that, I paid 120. Then for the next parts, I did buy some new plate work parts to weld in um, in the car. Also bought a new new spark plugs and stuff like that. The parts are on its way. Should be arrived today or tomorrow. 150 for plate work engine parts. So our total is 370 at the moment. Now let's get into the car. Let's get into the build. Let's go get uh, into the rest. you have a jack ready to support the, the radiator uh, support because as soon as you loosen the bolts from the bumper this part will come off it will loosen up and it, the engine will drop down so make sure you put a jack underneath it before you loosen up the bolts of the bumper so you can tighten up the bolts again as soon as the bumper is
All right, guys, so the rain stopped finally. Well, not really, but yeah, we moved on. What we did was remove the front. Now we have a clear look on what's going on on the inside. It is a little bit more work than I thought. There is more rust, definitely more rust. So we might need to replace the whole tray on both sides. Let's go get this bumper off and see the rust damage on this side. Um, hopefully it's better than on the front and we can work with it. It's pretty solid. The panels themselves are pretty solid. There is not not great damage or rust or anything that needs replacement except for the corners. We might be able to salvage them, but I still kind of want to do the diffuser thing and place the exhaust on the right hand side of the car. So we might still cut it up. I'm not sure. I we will definitely cut it up over here, like. But I'm not sure how far we need to go right here on the corners. I'm coming back to this part because I saw there was a piece missing showing the back side of the car so we managed to cut this piece off yes we did and what did we find we found a little bit of rust on the inside tape it off for now but there is a little bit of rust most of it is cut out so it will be a perfect start or perfect base for our diffuser to come right out of here and go straight up through the bumper this piece is a little bit rusted though so we might need to cut this off and replace it but yeah as far as I can see it's pretty good it's not too bad and not rusted through and pretty good solid base now let's get back to it and start on the front the rust is uh, worse than we thought so let's get our angle grinder in there cut up um, the rust cut the rust out and replace it with some new stuff quick tip that might come in handy. Uh, the moment I wanted to start on cutting inside the engine bay of the car, I was thinking maybe I should get a box and start at organizing the bolts I take off the car. So how I do this is I grab one of these, one of these boxes, they are like dirt cheap and they have these separate sections. And uh, what I do is, you, you could write on there, on right on here, but that would mean you have to clean it off every time or or if it's a permanent marker you won't get it off the thing I do what I do is I take one of these tapes always have these laying around I take little pieces put them right here and I write on the tape so I can just take the tape off whenever I'm ready and then I still know when I need to reassemble the car I know what, where to get my bolts from or I know where my bolts for which part are so this is how I, I organize my bolts for example if I have bolts for the fenders, I just right here, fenders, like so. And then I know I have to put the bolts of the fenders I take off right here. Then whenever I reassemble the car and I'm reassembling the fenders on the car, I know the bolts are here. Imagine you're done, imagine everything is empty, then just take it off and you have a brand new box all around and you didn't write on the box itself. So quick tip for anyone out there who has been using these little plastic bags. I've been doing the same and I've all also been putting tape on the plastic bags, but still these are not as handy as using one of these hard things, even to ride on or to 
to put bolts in these decks always. You, get, you gotta get your fingers in there or they're too tiny. So just get one of these guys and do it like this so you won't mess it up and you can reuse it. Not that great news, looks like the car has already been painted at some point because there is like a couple of millimeters bondo work on it. As you can see, it has been through a couple of layers, I'm not sure what. And it's thick, I can tell you it's a thick layer of bondo, so I think this car has been in an accident. This car has been in an accident before. But we can work it out. You can see some scratches now that we're working on it from the bundle work before. So, yeah, we knew it had a lot of work. This was not expected. So, we're probably going to cut out this whole piece right here because I got a new, put in a, a new one. But I'm, I'm really wondering how much bundle we're going to have to remove. There is something I want to share with you guys. I just learned a really cool trick on the internet. Just re how to repair rust in like five minutes. I just, it blew my mind. I'm like, I don't even know what I just saw on, on YouTube. I was like looking at how to repair bad welds and, and stuff like that on, on bodies, but I didn't know it was this easy. It's, it's crazy, it will blow your mind. Let me show you how unbelievable, I swear. It's wow. So what you do is you go to the to the spot, to the rust spot, and uh, you assess the damage, see how big it is, you measure it, and then you go back to into your garage or your home or, or whatever, and everybody has this. It's, it's super easy, guys. So, you ready for this? Damn! Slap this one though, but... Guys, I just wanted to point out that I'm not a professional mechanic. I do not work in a body shop. I do not have a degree in something similar or related to doing this. All things I do, I just, I learn as I go. And I actually, right now, concerning the body repair, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. I am learning together with you guys. I'm looking it up, doing some research, and I'm doing the cheapest way possible. Keep that in mind, it is not a professional solution, it is the cheapest way possible to do it, but the cheapest and most reliable way to do it. So if you want a project car, but you don't have a lot of money, like most of us, but you still want a car to rock like a $100 Golf and you still want it to look dope, 
and be able to go to shows, maybe not win cups or stuff, but you want people to show up at your car and say, like, hey, how did you do that? Or that's a cool feature I haven't seen before. Did you do it yourself? You can say it's custom job and you feel like you still have a cool car for a pretty good and cheap budget. So yeah, this is the cheap way of building a project car, not the most thorough way. I wish you guys the best of luck with your project cars. Hope you learned something on the way. And I hope I can teach you a thing or two on how to work a project car. But the most important thing to remember is just stop thinking about it and start doing. Just start doing, start working on your car, don't overthink things. Just look some things up and if you, if you don't feel comfortable that's okay. You will learn on the way. There is lots of internet nowadays with Google and YouTube. So many people that's showing you how to do things, do it yourselves. Just go with it, just follow one of them, uh, do some research and just go out and try it on your car. Start with small steps and, and get some confidence as you move forward and before you know it you're grinding away uh, stuff on your car like me or building a whole motor swap like the one I have in the garage with, with a turbo on it, a V6. Just go, just do it, don't give up, never, never doubt yourself, just go for it, never stop chasing your dreams remember that guys just never stop chasing your dreams have a good one thanks for watching and remember hit the subscribe button and hit the like button